SEO this week. Welcome everyone. SEO this week, episode 192. Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day. If you're celebrating that uh, in remembrance of all the cool things that he's done uh, in the name of civil rights for everyone, which is kind of cool. So uh, this week we are going to uh, talk about three stories, not a whole lot going on in the, in the SEO uh um, news niche, really. Uh, everyone's kind of just blabbing on about the same old things. But there's, I got three cool stories that I think you'll enjoy. Uh, and then I want to go over kind of the next level of that whole um, agritech analysis we did last week, right? So last week we showed you, or I showed you how to go through and uh, look at uh, different um, comp- competitors and pick an anchor text uh, percentage. Uh, that way to help you just kind of develop your own. Uh, and so this week I want to look a little bit closer at backlinks and how we're going to kind of use the disavow tool to establish a little bit of trust with Google. Um, so it'll be, um, it's not necessarily, we're not necessarily doing this to, you know, pick our bad links and, and keep our link profile clean. We're building trust. Uh, and there's something to be said with about having a disavow file. Uh, ergo, it builds more trust because you're paying more attention to your link profile um, versus not. Uh, I haven't tested it one way or another, uh, but I think it'll be some good information and it'll kind of keep you out of trouble uh, should you get into the disavow tool land anyway. Uh, so with that, hi, Dory. Thanks for coming. Everhart, hey. <laughs> Hey, John, how you doing? Uh, thank all of you. And uh, without that, let's get into the highlights. Uh, Kirill, hey, welcome. Moscow, awesome. Okay, so uh, as I said, we uh, I only got three stories. And uh, the first one is a Harrow. It's a story. It's a case study using um, looking at Harrow. Uh, and full disclosure, I'm pretty sure this is a, a link building company. And then they... They're kind of they have a link Harrow link building service, so uh, they have a unique asp- or look at these things and, and a, um, a valued what was it? Uh, I want to say it's you know for them it's it's kind of more important to look at link decay, uh, especially if people are paying them money to get a link on uh, from a Harrow perspective, right? Uh, and then the link dies like ninety days later, so they should they need to be able to know this stuff. Uh, in, in our cases, maybe that 90 days of promotion is worth it. And then you get the six months plus or minus a link echo, uh, from the site. So if someone, if they publish it as do follow and they transfer it to no follow or they delete it, the link echo is still there. Um, you know, what do we care? We we're always building more and more links. Um, but in, from a link buyer's perspective where you're actually paying somebody, uh, uh, either a service or you actually have a VA or someone doing this stuff for you, uh, that becomes a little bit of a different story uh, because you're actually spending money. So what the what they did is they showed you their link decay in this case study, uh, kind of went about how, how they looked at the, the places where they're sending their pitches to and how their links were taken care of in regards to where they published no follow versus do follow, um, where the page is there versus not, and that kind of stuff, and then looking for the time period. Uh, and then they just changed who they pitched their stories to. So instead of pitching to the ones that they knew were going to switch them to no follow or they knew were going to delete them, uh, in 90 days they just uh, transitioned to the other, other um, information seekers, the other publishers. Uh, and that helped them out uh, to uh, reduce link decay. Uh, again, from our perspective as a business owner or an SEO company that's not selling links, um, we don't really care about link decay all that much. And not to say that we don't care about it. It's just, you know, we're always, if you're always in a maintenance building or maintaining thing, you're always building backlinks because you expect uh, that your links are going to go bad at at some point in time. You just can't build links and expect them to all be there forever. 
Uh, it just doesn't work that way. And Google loses interest in the sites. The pages get de-indexed. They're not longer getting crawled. Uh, the websites are no longer getting updated. It, you know, it loses the value over and over over a period of time. So you have to do more and more. So link decay will always be there, um, but there are some things you can do to get over it, and that's what this story talks about. Uh, number two is e-commerce. This is a uh, it's a ninety nine plus ways to um, boost your sales in e-commerce. And you all know that I'm not a big fan of. of uh, showing these off, excuse me, itchy throat. I'm not a big fan of showing these off. It's just because most times they're kind of like phoning in articles that are, um, written half-assed. And in this case, the author actually put a, a, some, a really good time into it. And, uh, also it's, uh, one of those kind of Brian Dean style. If you follow him over at Bat Clinko, where he makes a nice evergreen article and then kind of updates it as time goes on. It's one of those, uh, originally published in 2020. Uh, but the the hacks or the information that's provided into it. I won't necessarily call them hacks is actually pretty good. So there's a mix of traffic generation stuff in there. Some ads intelligence, uh, and leveraging social media. Uh, there are 99 plus in there, and I think it's a it's a really good set, especially if you're in e-com uh, and you, you you just need to kind of reach more people. If you're at that point where uh, SEO is kind of taking you as far as you're going to get, and now you got to find the cold customer, and i.e. the ads and the social media, uh, and building an audience and, and um, taking a from a customer from a cold search to a warm search or a warm a warm customer. Um, because you've already hit all of the, um, the search intent, uh, you can in, uh, SEO. So, uh, pretty good post. I think you guys should check that out. Uh, at least if anything, it'll spark some ideas for you. And then finally is a, uh, it's a, it's a title tag test by search pilot. And what they did is they have, uh, a specific brand that they're working with. And that brand has a lot of brand recognition, brand search, um, and in a particular market, they're kind of the authority, as it were. Uh, and people uh, kind of, you know, like empire flooring to um, getting getting your floors done, that kind of, you know, that kind of thing. So you're searching for flooring, you see empire flooring, and you're more likely to click that than you are. Uh, Joe Bob's floors or Big Bob's floors or whatever, right? Um, and so what their test was to see if their traffic or their CTR would go up if they added the brand name before the keywords. So instead of saying floor flooring uh, company Dallas, it's Big Bob's flooring company Dallas. Uh, and to see if that increased uh, over the course of all of their tests, and 49% of their pages actually got a higher click-through rate. Um, I think it was 23% or something, some weird number like that, that got a negative click-through rate because of it. Uh, but overall, they saw a 15% increase in traffic as a result of this test, which is, I think is actually pretty good. Um I don't know that I would go about doing this for everyone. I don't think it would be like a recommended thing, but if you're in a smaller town and you have uh, your clients are kind of the place that everyone's looking for, right, um, then I would probably go ahead and, and test this out and see if it works for you. I would expect that moving, uh, say yours are set up, your title tags are set up with your keyword leading in the front, uh, and then when you put the brand in there, I would probably expect to see a drop. And then if you're going to see an increase because you have your brand in there, the CTR in theory uh, would increase your ranking. So you get the benefit out of that. Uh, so it's an interesting test. It's an interesting concept. Uh, and I think uh, uh, certainly worth, worth going for. And, and you all know the CTR is kind of, once you're in the top three, you're playing a CTR game and you want to capture as many clicks as you can. Uh, so this seems like a really simple test to uh, implement. Um, you'd have to go all in on a bigger, on a smaller site versus a, a larger one where you can do categories and stuff. Um, but it, it may be worth it. Just think about your brand 
uh, or your clients' brands, and is there a, are they getting a lot of brand traffic? Is there brand association with whatever they're providing? And if there is, go ahead and give this one a test. Maybe you get that 15% increase in traffic, which turns into another extra 2% in, in leads. And 2% in converting leads uh, for a roofer is a lot of money. So what's that, ten dollars to $30,000 uh, a converting lead, and you got them 2% more than they had. It's uh, kind of like an easy thing to do, right? So I would check that out. And um, that's it. That's it for the news. Uh, which is really cool. So if you guys have any questions on that, I doubt it. But if you do, uh, hit me up and let me know. I am running another test on Digital Ear, and I don't know if you guys can pick it out what it is, uh, but I'm testing to see if my I can talk without getting a scratchy throat. Hold on. <clears> throat> Testing to see if this will actually Google to give us a love for the highlights. And that's a HTML code. It's a hyphen mark. Uh, I can write it out for you if you guys want me to. Let me open this up. I should have had it open already, but I closed it for other reasons. Uh. It's uh, just like this, M-A-R-K, mark. And in HTML, that creates that highlight there. Uh, I have another code that I want to test as well that will actually, when I scroll and I've identified key terms inside of there that I want to see um, that have more value to me, um, when I scroll, they'll actually start highlighting as a user scrolls. I haven't implemented that yet, but really I want to just somebody claim that they got some boost from this, um, from from doing that, and I wanted to see uh, what, uh, what happened. And I'll tell you that it's, there's a couple things that are going on right now that I think are pretty interesting, and I don't know if you guys are seeing this at, as, as well, but uh, when I do a, a new episode, it's actually taken like a week for that episode to show up in the index. Uh, and that's just natural. I, I Last week's, I was, I was playing around with 191s to see if like Omega or Speed Links will kick it in, but it didn't really, neither of them did anything. Search Console uh, definitely didn't do anything, but from 188 on, uh, which is around the time that Google said they quote unquote fixed their indexing and they turned indexing back on. Um, I'm I'm seeing a one leak turnaround. So by the time 192 gets indexed or by the time 191 got indexed, 192 is ready to be published, right? So um, check that out and see if that's happening to you guys as well. I'd really be interested in seeing if you guys are are seeing the, the same the same thing. Um, another thing is they used to have a, a limit of 50 for um, search, submitting to Google Search Console. And right now it looks like the, the limit from most users that I'm seeing uh, being reported is 10 to 15 URLs at a time. Uh, so <clears throat> if you're not in SIA and you're not using that indexing hack that I taught in there, uh, you, you may run into this. But really, if you're putting out that much content, you're probably dealing with a news site or something like that. And uh, from what I understand, the news sites are actually doing a whole lot better uh, with indexing anyway. Uh, so I would just kind of, you know, check it out, see how it's working out for you and, and see what you're running into. But that's what I'm seeing right now is that one week delay. Um, which is weird because if you... Um, All right, apologize. Um, so that's weird because you're seeing um, that one-week delay, 
and I'm actually publishing consistently, right? So if you talk to anyone, it's publish, publisher consistency helps with the crawl and then the site maps and all that stuff. So if I'm consistently publishing once a week like clockwork uh, and Googlebot is based off of that consistency, why did digital ear get throttled down to where now it's almost coming back a week later? Um, so... That's pretty, uh, that's pretty weird. And then also when I submit, I publish the posts and I submit them directly to search console like that day, like push, publish, go to search console, submit to index. Um, so it's not a notification thing. Uh, there's something going on. Uh, and also the secondary index in the search console is showing that my pages are indexed, but when I do a URL search URL, URL on quotes site, and then URL, it's not in the index. So, um, so that's pretty interesting is, um, why is that, uh, um, uh, why is that happening and what's going on with indexing right now? This kind of slow things down. The, the other thing I could do, uh, is actually make SEO this week and put that into a Google news sitemap. And see if I can get this category submitted uh, or approved in Google Publisher as a news thing. Uh, and then uh, kind of try it out, try things out that way. I don't know if I want to do that one. Uh, like, I've, here's what I've tossed around is do the episode during the week and then kind of do a, um, like a, like a news thing. This is the thing that happened today. Um, kind of thing, not, not a roll up, but just almost like a search engine SEO round table kind of, you know, or, um, uh, what's that guy's name? All those guys that do the, do the news and follow the forums. And this is the latest and greatest kind of thing for today. Just do one of those a day. And I, and I thought about that. The downside is, is whatever I take on for my business, it takes away from whatever I'm doing for my clients. And then I have, there's that balancing act that I'm just not prepared to, to to have yet uh but putting this in once a week uh as a roll up might actually have some value so i'm gonna i'm gonna find um madge he's my google news expert uh and i'll talk to him and see about just doing not the whole domain but just this one particular category and getting that into the google news and we'll see how that goes um so that's kind of that's kind of interesting um from that perspective uh, let's see. Is Clint put away? Then? No, no. <laughs> I don't, you know what? The only reason I wear the black hat is because it's recognizable. It's a good brand, right? Um, I do black hat SEO. I do gray hat SEO. I do white hat SEO. Um, any type of SEO that actually makes me money. Uh, I don't market to people based off of fear. Um, I just, you know, it's just not my style. So, uh, most people that talk about white hat SEO methods, really that's their sales pitch is the, how bad black hat is for you and how you'll get into trouble. Uh, and then they don't really give the, uh, the whole, um, the whole story on that, that white hat full SEO, SEO policy, which is do ads, um, and, um, write content until your, your fingers fall off and hope that one of them or two of them is actually good enough to generate links. And I can tell you that, um, that, that doesn't work. And I'm not telling you that out of, because I, I, I think you should do building backlinks, right? I'm telling you that out of, um, personal experience because this is from a guy who wrote a blog post a day for an entire year. And I can tell you that I did decent blog posts. Um, I ranked fairly okay because of my keyword selections. Uh, and not one of them damn things ever made me a backlink. I didn't earn a backlink for my high quality content. I made some money off of them, but I never earned a backlink off of my high quality content. So, um, you know, so if you're getting in, if you want to play the, let's get into the white hat versus black hat versus gray hat, uh, eventually I think what I'll do is I'll bug Dory and see if she can find someone cause she's a lot better at finding people than I am and doing some research and find me a money hat. That would be pretty cool. And I'll, and I'll wear that, but <clears throat> no, I'm not getting into white hat SEO or any of that stupid games. So, oh, let's see. All right. So, uh, onto the topic for today. And I want, and again, I wanted to talk about 
uh, backlink analysis. And so let's go over here. We're going to sign over into Ahrefs. And if you guys could, give me a keyword if you're watching. Facebook, YouTube, whatever. Comments and give me a keyword so that I can, uh, we can find a site. Victorian floor tiles. That's a good keyword. Ooh, pretty. Um, let's go. Huh, you can get them at the Walmart Super Center. It mentions it. I don't know about you, but I don't think I'll be ordering uh, Victorian floor tiles from the Walmart Super Center. And that's interesting. There's two there. I'm going to use this one. Let's see. No, I'm not, not going to even waste my time. If you're too lazy to put up HTTPS, then what the hell's wrong with you? This is, this is weird. Man, this should be an easy keyword. I mean, look at your comp, the competition for this one. Jeez, news, Victorian tiles, blogs. I mean, seriously, what is, this, what is this madness? What is going on here? It's like somebody threw up some pictures off of Pinterest and then said, uh, and optimized this and ranked for it. I wonder where it, how it's monetized. What a horrible site. Jeez. <clears throat> Let's see. Old English tiles. Collections. Yeah, this one is not too... Current tiles. See, this looks a little bit better. I think what uh, let's see what they got for backlinks. I'm gonna look at their whole domain. All right, so if you remember uh, uh, last week's episode, I said when you're doing backlink analysis and anchor tech analysis and all that it's, you know, stuff, use multiple tools. So for the purpose of this, I'm just gonna use one tool, and then you um, and and we're building authority. Or, or kind of trying, attempting to build some trust with uh, the use of the Google Disavow tool. Okay, so um, really when you're trying to do the trust thing, you don't have a penalty, you don't need to go full bore with the Disavow tool. One of these is just fine. Uh, and typically just find the one that has the, more, the most backlinks uh, out of the um the other one so i got three majestic and seo i got sem rush too but sem rush is kind of linked to my majestic account so really are they getting all that much different in my experience it's kind of not so um if you don't have um sem rush and um and you're not connecting these two. The backlink audit thing and SEM rush is just fine. You'll be you'll be okay. Uh, but if you have them both, just put uh, SEM rush, SEM rush, however the fuck you want to say it, SEM rush uh, and um, majestic together. Tie those together with the APIs, and then you'll get some more backlink stuff. Uh, but for the most part, my point is that you don't need both um, for what we're doing here. Uh, so you see, yeah, see these kind of look a little bit similar. Yeah, Shutterstock, Secure, Cinebreeze, D-Look, PR Log, uh, some Pinter stuff, Lifestyles, Archellos. Okay, so we're not too, this isn't too bad. So we're going to we're gonna go ahead and, um, and stick with Ahrefs. Uh, and so... The next step after you have this is actually to go in and, and look at and find the, the crap, right? Like the pure, it's 
total crap. <laughs> and, you're, and you're not cleaning up a link profile. Remember, we're building some trust in here. We just want to get out the crap. And some things that kind of kick off right away uh, is the these, this PR right here, empty anchor text. Um, it was It's older. Do I really need it? Uh, there's 16 links. Let's see what else is going on in here. Empty anchors, empty anchors, and then a whole bunch of regeneration.au. This is uh, some other um, domains that are kind of mixed in there. We can look at this page a little bit and check it out, and instantly I know I don't want it. I don't care. To me, that one is crap. Okay, so you have to um, decide for the disavow tool is do you want to disavow just the URLs or do you want to disavow the entire domain? Keep in mind when you disavow the entire domain, all that stuff is gone and it's kind of, and you can get it back by just removing it and going back to the URLs, but it's kind of the nuclear option when it's, when, it, when you're dealing with sites. And a lot, one thing that a lot of people get in trouble with is they're using something like uh, wordpress.com and they have a lot of Web 2s in there where your client bought some Web 2s and there's a whole bunch of Web 2 stuff in there. Uh, and what they do is they disavow WordPress.com, which is a big mistake. Uh, at a minimum, when you're dealing with WordPress.com, you want to be disavowing, you know, that, that junk subdomain dot WordPress.com. And make sure you're only disavowing this so that when you have your brand WordPress.com in there, it's not disavowing that uh, because the brand one is where you make announcements. They can't find you anywhere else. Maybe they're searching on WordPress.com and they find your brand. But if you've disavowed the entire domain, you've actually made this useless as a, as a link building target. And you don't want to do that. So you got to be careful uh, there and that's a that's a really big decision, especially uh, when you're talking about uh, doing a disavow tools. A lot of people get in trouble because they don't pay attention to that. Uh, so if you're new to this, my recommendation is to stick with disavowing individual URLs until you can actually determine whether you want to go full nuclear on stuff. Uh, let's see. So previously, we would not disavow unless we had a search console notification. Is the risk versus benefit worth a disavow? One of the best to leave it alone. No, nope, that's honestly, that's a, you know, that's a, a recommendation that even myself gave, but it's kind of like, oh, let me just sit until my house burns down. Uh, I'm not going to put a fire extinguisher. I'm not going to put smoke detectors. I'm not going to put uh, carbon dioxide detectors. I'm not going to ch clean out my um, my sockets. I'm not going to check my power strips. I'm just going to let it go until my house burns down. And then if it happens, then okay, I'll worry about it. Uh, as I said, when I started, um, this is an attempt to check your backlinks, clean up the obvious trash, and build a little bit of trust in the algorithm because you're showing the math, you're showing the algorithm that you actually cared a little bit about your link profile. Uh, and ergo, the theory is that you are building a little bit of trust uh, based off of that. So that's why we're doing this. We're not waiting for the house to burn down. Uh, we're just, and we're not going uh, full bore and doing a full link cleanup. We're finding the trash and putting in a, uh, a, um, a disavow file that would actually kind of address that a little bit uh, and keep us safe. Here's another one, site links on info. Yeah, I disavow that. Uh, these don't really do you any good. Like, look, there's no, there's no power in these, right? Um, so I think that's, what is that, DA? Yeah, the DR60. You know, some people would say that's good, but it's 10 here. And it's empty anchors. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't. I, it's just easier to get rid of it. Like those are fine when you're trying to get a new domain index and and stuff worried out. But after that, you kind of don't need it anymore. So you can add that one. We like it. We can add the PR one too. Uh, let's see. There was 
a tool in here. Well, I'm just going to do it this way. Uh, let's see. Crypto coins to this. I don't need this. Let's look and see what this is. Yeah, I can get rid of that. I disavow that. That's junk. Uh, there's another instance right here. Different URL. I disavow that. Forums, not necessarily a bad thing unless your clients went a little bit crazy and those are a bunch of forum profiles. Then you want to look at the forums and just pick out the ones that are not related to your market and that are just complete, like, unmoderated garbage. Uh, those are the ones you want to disavow, but the rest of them you, you're good to go. All these AUs, this is all crypto coins. I'd probably just go ahead and disavow the domain and be done with it because there's a lot of trash in there. Look at that. Just It's just a whole bunch, and it's just search volume. They're, they're trying to, to get... They're, they're trying to get some relevance and stuff, but it's got they got that search turned on, and then it's creating uh, a bunch of noise, right? So, and we don't need any of that stuff um, pointing at our website, even though it's coming th more than likely it's coming through the Google API uh, and the search results API. Just be done with it. Um, and then let's see. Non glaze keyword suggest tool, non glaze portfolio. Let's look at this one, see if this is junk. <sighs> That's a keyword tool. Domains. Uh, this one, yeah. It looks like those other ones, right? They kind of all look the same. I think I would get rid of that one. And it's no follow, so. Not that no follow is no good. It's just no follow. So it's like on the checkboard of things, like, is it really worth keeping it? I wouldn't need it. Shutterstock Tools app. Let's see what this is. Is it actually Shutterstock, the brand? And that's just a subdomain. Yeah, Shutterstock blog. Probably a copy, but it's not that horrible. I'm going to keep that one. It's another one of those keyword suggest tools I get rid of. Another stats site. It's more of that crypto coin crap. I get rid of all of those. Um, what is this? Look at this. Stats site. You know, I, there are some values to those, especially if there's do follow links, but if these in content these content links like that is just you know unless you're going to actually build some backlinks to them and boost those up uh, and pass some of your link juice through those don't even make them uh, especially after you've already got your domain established once your domain domain is a thing it's in the index um you don't need to make those anymore they're just kind of junk they don't hide anything uh, very well uh, more of this cryptocurrency crap i get rid of all that there's some more. Yeah, that that one Australia, I just get rid of it. I get rid of it. Let's see. What is this? Yeah, see? It's a ghetto directory. I get rid of that. Uh, let's see. Uh, floor biz. I'm also looking for anchor tech. So keep an eye on your anchor techs as you're going through and doing your stuff. Websites, no no problem. Contact us, no problem. Those are um, uh, related to the uh, keyword, right? Uh, MFG pages, no problem. More. Looking for more. Looking for more. Content source. Australia 24. There's a lot of these sites in that. I'd probably, I'd, I'd disavow that one too. It's no follow. Anchor Texas garbage is from a 301. I would do that 
uh, it, it's just from it's from a three hundred one. So the, the question would be: um, Did you guys own this domain and did you afford it, uh, or did you buy this domain and, and because it had uh, it was a little bit relevant, and then you went this way, or is that an old thing? Uh, think about that first before you say you're going to disavow. Because like this one's fixed, this one's right. Um, so. Probably, let's look at, see what this is. Yeah, these are, these are almost like poor man's citations, really. They're just junk. I would disavow those too. There is relevance in the having Australian inside of the domain. Uh, there's some brand, um, and you get the reverse sink or swims applied. Old English tiles is in there. Old English tiles in Australia is there. Um, so, but it, to me, that's, it's kind of, you can get that better on a, on a better looking site, uh, with a little bit more, um, trust and be able to sleep a little bit easier with that one. No one is not going to come back and haunt you, uh, down the road. If that directory was a little bit more filled out, uh, I would actually, I would be fine with it. Here's another directory. See, this one's a little bit more filled out. There's more stuff on it. So this one's, I wouldn't. This one I would keep. It's, it's fine with me. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see. Porcelain talk door, talk decor. Let's see what this one is. Yeah. See, this one's fine. I'd be happy with it. I'm looking for any other obvious trash. More like this. I worry about the XYZs. This is trash. I disavow this. You definitely want to disavow these. If you go to, uh, if you're linking, clicking through your profile and you get redirected, instant disavow. Just do it. You don't want to be associated with malware or anything like that. And it may not be there yet, but it doesn't mean it's not coming. Here's another one. Move list XYZ unicorn name. Instantly, I disavow it. Not because it's a, just because it didn't, it didn't even redirect, right? It just kind of stuck there. Um, and it's a, the domain is kind of horrible. Here's another one. See, this is, this is even better. It's a, it's a small directory. It's kind of crap. You get your nap and you get your link and stuff. That's all fine and dandy, but at least it's filled out and it doesn't look as horrible as those other ones, right? So we'll keep that one. Uh, let's see. Tiles more like this. Here's a blog spot. This is another, this is one that was, Kind of, it's a good thing. Like, yeah, see, this one's not too bad. Uh, but most people would go in there and disavow the entire blogspot.com. If you were disavowing that, you want to disavow this. If you want to be really safe, you just want to disavow the URL and be done with it, and you'll be you'll be safe. Um, let's see. Search locally. Gay. I disavow that one. Uh, IP in the URLs, disavow those. Uh, let's see, what is this noise? Disavow. Uh, you know, you're gonna you're expected to promote. You're gonna do property stuff. So, I think you can leave that one. You you can get away with it. There's no power to it. So, disavowing it or not is not gonna do anything for you for you whatsoever. Um, let's see what else. Here's some other blog spots. These are just no, no name, no link stuff. And this one, let's check this out. <sighs> this one's not horrible. It actually looks good. It presents well. So I would keep that too. So, all right. So <clears throat> you saw how fast that was. I literally, what did we do that in like 10 minutes? We went through all of their things. We came up with two domains, the Australia one and the, the with the cryptocurrency crap on it. And then that Australia 30 or whatever with the directory on it. Um, I would actually, you know, get rid of all, get rid of those, save yourself, uh, some drama down the road is it's, it's really it's a, it's a link form it's designed to capture as much as it can um 
it's not even if it, they were trying to be a search engine, they did a crap job out of it. So just get rid of those two domains, disavow the entire domains, and then the rest of them we'd actually put on our list to do uh, the disavow the URL just to be safe. Now we what I've done there is not, and let me be clear, I've not done a link cleanup. I've just picked some to establish that, look, I care about my profile and I see these and I'm going to do it and you're going to update it. And you update your disavow and you're done. Uh, uh, if we wanted to do a clean cleanup, we'd have to go through and, like I said uh, last week, you download all of those things. And then if you have a big link profile, you just want to get link research tools, bite the bullet. If you're doing that for somebody else and they're paying you to do a link cleanup, you know, pass on that cost to them and it's significant cost. If you guys have checked that out, you're looking anywhere from four to $500 all the way to a couple of grand, uh, depending on how much you do, right? And how many links you're looking at. Uh, but it's worth it and it makes it a whole lot easier because you can do what we just did um, in uh, ad nauseum. Just kind of look through it in mass and it'll. there's some rules in there already that you can actually filter and find and select and just disavow all of them right off the bat. And then, um, But I, I caution you when you're doing that. And then there, you can actually go through one by one and check it out to make sure you're not killing something that's important to you. Okay. Um, and that's it. And then you submit to the, the Google disavow tool. Now let's see. Christoph, would you split off a bog from an econ site? Yeah, that's not even related to what we're talking about. Um, so I'll come back to that one during the Q&A session. All right. So um, the disavow tool, if you guys don't know, they've actually, they're moving that ar around. Um, so let's go to uh, Google and this is our tool. When you, when you come here, uh, you get this message and you want to actually go to this one and, and, and put it in. Um, I will point out that if you had um, a disavow file in the old one and then you go over to the new one, the disavow file is gone. You have to do it again um, and, uh, and and upload it again. It's a good time to actually go back inside of there and, and clean out your uh, your disavow file, make sure you didn't do any harm or that you got enough and just kind of update it uh, for your current uh, link profile. Uh, so I thought it was, it was timely to, to um, kind of to show this to you guys correctly. This is true. So if you don't know, if you absolutely have no idea what you're doing uh, or you don't want to take the time to actually do what I just showed you and go through one by one because you have a ton of links, then just stay away from the disavow file. Because more than likely you're just going to hurt yourself then um, in the long run because your laziness will uh, put or result in you putting links in here or you're, I don't want to be totally rude but and say laziness but your lack of due diligence you'll pick some link um some sites that are actually ranking you pretty well <laughs> and then put them in your distant well file on accident and reduce your rankings um so you got you have to know that coming in front that you got to be uh real careful that's why I just showed you go through here and just specifically pick out the trash stuff like that you're not going to get any value out of and you're probably not going to get a whole lot of value out of this right it, it it looks cool if i if i was using chrome i could probably translate it and see if it's related like custom design elegant tiles ceramic tiles it's kind of related um but i probably wouldn't keep it especially when i want to build a little bit of trust so i would just submit those in there uh individually via the url just in case you never know something there might be some power in there um if this was a do follow link i would keep those all day long and i can just send some spam to them and that would probably um actually pass on pretty quick uh let's see um, and I don't, I don't see anything else that stands out. So just kind of, you know, that's it's the process is really easy. Uh, just remember, you're going to, when you do the disavow search, go to the old tool. If you used it before, go in here, click the disavow link, download your text file, and then come back in here after you've updated it and put it in the new version. Um, 
why this one doesn't carry over to this one considering they're both in search console i have no idea maybe they're just dumping it out and letting people start over so um that's kind of kind of cool of, of them i guess there we go yay all right all right so you guys have any questions hopefully it helped you out on that the process is the same whether you're in ahrefs or majestic uh, moz if you're a moz user they updated their their database to six something million links bef- uh, 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 what a year ago now uh, so you might have a decent chance of that. If you have SEM rush, you can kind of do the same thing. Uh, you can follow those toxic and um, messages and stuff in your tools, link research tools, SEM rush, and cognitive SEO kind of embrace those toxic things. Just keep in mind that those are based off of users teaching uh, those systems. This is what a toxic link looks like. Uh, and then it goes... Uh, and it auto assigns those. So if you're going to rely on those, do yourself a favor and at least look through and make sure you're not uh, disavowing good stuff. Um, I know a lot of people who have actually done that, relied on those, and found that uh, they like they've disavowed their own personal PBNs. Like dummy, you should have read that <laughs> that stuff. So you want to make sure you check that out. All right, um, let's see, Christoph. So look for no anchor text, low DAPA. Non domain domains and redirects, um, like those could be your rules, right? So, um, the no anchor text you got to be careful because you got what you got the um, brand mentions. I don't even say that's a backlink. It, it would just mean that they put the backlink in there and then they didn't fill that out. That could be that your link builder is doing a little bit of nefarious stuff, but I can tell you that some of that nefarious stuff still ranks. So you want to be real careful with it. And you can also, also it's the image link building can do it too, right? So be a little careful on that. If you do the low DAPA, um, I would, if you're going to use that as a filter, ignore DA and just use PA. Um, because your Google ranks page is not websites, right? So if you if you can get a whole bunch of links that are, are measured on a DA um, or UR and they have a higher number versus a lower one and you want to, you know, just kind of minimize the lower ones, go ahead and use that as a filter, you'll be okay. Uh, non-related domains, I... I, I, I don't want to tell you... I gotta be a little careful about this, right? So, can you rank? Let's put it this way: Can you rank with non-related domains uh, and non-related content, uh, and do just fine? Yep, you can. As a matter of fact, the when I'm building links on uh, networks and stuff, at the end of the day, title tag URL has my keyword in it, and then I put my keyword in the content. But the domain could be whatever the hell ever it wanted to be, and I don't really care. You want to not find non-related domains. You want to find trash. So the trash that I pointed out today was what? It was those directory things, uh, websites made with um, the Search Console AP or the Search API just to create link lists uh, or um, what was the other one? The redirect uh, it was not necessarily that the redirect was bad. What was bad is the redirect was there and it was sending us to essentially what was probably going to be triggered as a malware warning eventually. And we don't want to be associated with that stuff. And you can, you can actually find those, uh, really quick. If you'd use a URL, URL profiler, throw your entire link profile in there, click on malware and it let that software do its thing and it'll give you a list of all of them uh, to add to your um, to your uh, link profile. And it's probably the fa- the safest way to check that out and, and implement that. Let's see, Muhammad, if you wanted to verify if the links are still alive, any tool would you use? Uh, URL profiler is, is good. Uh, you can use that scrape box too. Uh, but for the most part, I just kind of, <clears throat> I don't... I just kind of rely on Ahrefs and Majestic. Uh, it'll say if it's dead or not, and you just filter out the ones that it say are dead. Bear in mind that if it's oftentimes what I found is it'll say it's dead and then it's actually there. Uh, but I haven't run into a whole lot of instances where it says it's there and it's not. 
you, you know what I mean? So um, if you if you filter out for dead, you might actually miss ones that are alive. Um, so it's it's kind of hit hit or miss, right? But for the most part, you're looking at just uh, finding a tool that will actually go to the websites, download the HTML, find it, see if your URL is there or not, uh, and go away. But URL profile and scrape box will help you out. Uh, just remember, the bigger your your, um, your backlink profile is, the the more trouble you're going to have. You can, I believe, you can also do it with Spyglass SEO Spyglass. I showed that last week, um, but I haven't I haven't tested that out. Uh, all right, so last ten minutes, we'll just kind of go off into the tangent questions. Uh, let's see, Christoph, would you split a blog off from an ecom site into a separate domain? Any benefits to add as a backlink source? That's um, I don't. If I wouldn't do it if it, if it's already there, it's an established blog. Then why would you split it off? Uh, you can use that blog to as a internal linking boost. You can use that to um, drive information seekers and turn them into buyers, uh, etc. And you can reduce the um, the time that it takes to actually get them there because you're reducing. The, uh, the amount of bounces and, and moving from one domain to another, uh, which is minimal from a user perspective, but it, it just, it kind of does matter when they see the URLs change a little bit, right? Um, if it's a brand new one, you can, because you're creating a new, a new website and, and then you're sending, you're going to have to promote the, the new website, i.e. the blog with backlinks and stuff. Uh, and then you're going to also have to promote the money site. And it's not one of those situations where if the blog was in a subdirectory uh, versus a subdomain, I'm, I'm promoting to the blog. I'm promoting the blog, but it's helping the entire money site because my interlinking is doing really good uh, versus a subdomain blog where I have to intentionally do interlinking uh, in between those two websites. So it's a little bit harder. Uh, and that's... Just, you know, it's a consideration for you. I know a lot of people that that preach go ahead and build subdomains and build backlinks to it. Uh, but if you guys don't know, by now I'm pretty damn lazy. So why would I create more websites when I can just have one website and do some good interlinking and leverage as much power out of my backlinks as I can? Uh, and that's why I do silos the way I do and categories and all that madness uh, intentionally so I can send backlinks to the right places and let that just kind of do its thing. Uh, let's see, Vinay. Hey, Vinay, how you doing? If we disavow a good link by accident or by relying on those tools, can we ask for a recrawl or is it gone for good? You can actually do a recrawl. Um, if you're using uh, link research tools, they, he's got a, it's called uh, Link Detox Boost. And essentially what, it, what you do is you submit your disavow file and then you give it that Link Detox Boost and it's running it through an indexer uh, system at the end of the day and just forcing Google to recrawl all the domains and, or the URLs you just disavowed. Uh, ergo, triggering you, your, or activating your disavow uh, file a little bit faster. That's the purpose of it. You can do the same thing with Omega speed links or whatever. And just kind of, you're just kind of forcing those to go off. So if you do one on accident, you can just resubmit that one you did on accident and then let it run through and then it'll bounce it off your disavow file eventually. And then you're, you, you'll be okay. Uh, will you necessarily, let's say it was a big one that was ranking like your page number one and you deleted it. Now you're number 12 uh, you're probably not going to get all that power back. Uh, so be careful uh, and make sure you don't accident, <laughs> you know, be diligent so you don't accidentally do that. Uh, and for the most part, you're probably not going to submit a URL that that's powerful anyway because it's going to come off a decent looking site. Or you know that you've built uh, tiers to it. So if you've done all that work, you're not going to have to worry about it. Uh, let's see. Any tips on JSON LD for job listings? I have pages that have the correct syntax, no in errors yet. Uh, result check, which result checker shows nothing to show. I would look at that, <clears throat> and um, I'd have to look at that to give you any recommendations. If the scheme is correct, 
And well, actually, that's not true because the job schema is populating the Google Jobs service. So it's not necessarily a rich snippet. You're actually populating the Google Jobs database. And then when people search for that and the Google Jobs listing shows up, now your page is actually in that uh, for that specific search. That's the, that's the point of that. You don't necessarily get a rich snippet. You're added into the jobs database. <clears throat> um, so that would kind of explain, that would explain why you don't see it inside of the rich snippets testing tool because really it doesn't, they're not qualifying that as a rich snippet. Like when you go on this, on that Google dev thing, it looks like it's a rich snippet, right? You get the whole different search thing, but at the end of the day, it's not. It's a, it's a database for jobs. Think like monsters.com. That's why they build it so they can f- compete with monsters and indeed. Um, and it will, um, you're just adding your, your schema being there is helping it build that database so that you can see them much better. Okay, good. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. I appreciate all you guys for coming. Um, this week, I think I'll be pretty quiet this week doing, I got some SEO tests I have to, uh, build and stuff. Um, what else are we doing this week? I'm actually out in the yard. So I have my other channel, Clint Butler. Uh, I'm going to, I got a, one of those S motion, selfie stick wand thingies and uh, i actually dug up half of my yard i got two acres and i I dug up the irrigation and stuff and i kind of want to just kind of go through our process of actually building our garden out just so that you know you guys see that this stuff you need you need to walk away from seo every once in a while and you got to find something so i got my trees and pretty soon i'll have a garden and so that's kind of cool and i got my dogs and they're driving me crazy but um, so we're, we're, th- I'm thinking about kicking that off. We're also thinking about kicking off another channel, um, just for, um, cooking. Like we like, like, I like to do a lot of cooking stuff and my wife signed up for, um, Pampered Chef, uh, which is, if you never, if you're not familiar, it's like, um, it's, uh, cooking utensils and pots and pans and knives and all that cool stuff. And it's actually pretty decent quality and you can bounce around with it as great gifts and all that stuff but um and and we had a <clears throat> my kids are getting ready my last my um youngest son's getting ready to move out he should be gone like a month uh, and then we're going to go through and get rid of all the old pots and pans and all the stuff that gets abused when you have kids around and um and we're gonna do pampered chef and do that and kind of monetize that uh, as well so that'll be good so um, the other channel, if you just search for my name, Christoph Clint Butler, you should see it. Um, I don't even remember if I set a custom, uh, whatchamacallit. Let me look. Dun, dun, dun. It's not that... Man, look at that. That was Washington. Um, let's see. Where's the other channel? I'm going to just go here. Let's see. I'm not going to switch counts, though. It's right there. That's the one you're looking for. Actually, that's a lie. It's this one. With me and the hat. Uh, your channel is that one here's the url <laughs> in case you guys are here and you want it that's the url <laughs> um this is the original one that i made i got some old videos in there when i was actually skinny and i shaved my head because i was in the army and um you know it was brand new Brand new turd trying to learn SEO stuff. All my that's all my old stuff. There's a lot of history back there, um, but I want to bring this channel. I was thinking I want to bring this channel back up and just kind of you know do some stuff that's not marketing related and have some more fun with it. Uh, again, I said the um, we had the the um, the garden stuff going on. Uh, we're 
making plans and, and kind of thinking doing RV stuff um, and some other cool things. And, and I got a lot of open desert around here and we're looking at some astronomy stuff. So, you know, I just, I just want to, I work from home. We're stuck in COVID. You guys are all kind of the same way, right? You're either at home or you're stuck in COVID and you can, really can't go do some stuff. So let's find some stuff that we can do. Uh, and that's kind of the point of that channel. So we're going to have a good time. Uh, yeah, it is definitely a blast from the past, like way in the past. Um, all right, guys and gals, thank you very much for coming to the show. And um, if you could hit the thumbs up uh, for me, hit subscribe. If you want to get notified, click the little bell thing. You can ignore them just like I ignore most of the ones that I'm, that I'm done to and I watch them later. But um, all that stuff is engagement. That engagement actually helps get YouTube to promote me a lot more to other people. Uh, my views in general are down. Don't necessarily mind it. I just really want people that are interested in what I have to say anyway. So, um, But it would be nice to be exposed to some, some new people. I know there are a lot of people that are doing some weak-ass SEO shows and have more views than me, which is odd. And I just got to kind of figure out um, what that is. And it could be I'm just crap at promoting myself so enable me and promote me for you for me please <laughs> all right well, thank you guys and uh i will see you next week and enjoy the rest of the holiday if you're in the u.s